how you can completely remove disable Hyper-V or V Ethernet from Windows 10. So you may ask, why you want to do that in the first place? So if you find you having uh, trouble running uh, VirtualBox or VMware, just like other virtual machines on your newly purchased Windows machine or newly installed Windows 10 or 11 machines, you are not alone. I have trouble to run uh, VirtualBox and uh, having trouble with uh, something called the V-Ethernet. I have no idea what they do and I find out later they are related to Hyper-V, the hypervisor provided by Microsoft. So my issue is uh, after I install VirtualBox, I find my VPN connection doesn't work anymore. So it can connect but I'm not able to reach the target network. So basically my network is screwed up unless I uninstall VirtualBox. Let's search for MS Info and choose System Information. And on this box, scroll down. If you see a hypervisor is being detected, feature will not be displayed for Hyper-V. If you never intentionally enabled Hyper-V, then you are a victim of the Hyper-V just like me and Microsoft just made the removing of Hyper-V super difficult and complicated. And if you don't remove, your other VM software may not run properly. Search Control Panel in the search box. Click Program and Features. Click Turn Windows Feature on or off. Make sure the containers is not checked. Make sure the Hyper-V is not checked. Actually, this is not the actual Hyper-V. This is just some management tool for you to interact with the Hyper-V. So just remove this one is not enough. And lastly, make sure the Windows Sandbox is not checked. If you are using Windows Server System for Linux, make sure you are using the version 1, not version 2. I will show you the command later. After that, press OK. Now let's search PowerShell and right click the PowerShell to run in administrator mode. Copy and paste this WSL Windows Server System for Linux command to set the WSL into version 1. And you can also use WSL minus L minus V to check whether your WSL is in version 1 or not. Make sure it's in version 1. Copy and paste the following command into the PowerShell to deeply remove the Hyper-V. So the command will be in video description, so you can just copy and paste. And you may experience longer waiting time at your site because I already removed the Hyper-V, so my results uh, displayed quite fast. And here is the second command. And next, search gpedit.msc Group Policy Editor. At Computer Configuration, click Admin Template. Click System. And click Device Guard. And make sure the turn on virtualization based security is being disabled. Set to disable. After that, reboot your Windows. Now let's check MS Info, which is system information again. And you should able to see 
So after that, you should able to see Hyper V VM monitor, blah blah blah. Hyper V secondary level, blah blah blah. There's a four of them. All of them are yes, which means Hyper V is been removed. And ironically, this is uh, what kind of logic is there. So uh, Hyper V yes means Hyper V is not there. Now let's search device manager and click it. And now you can safely remove those Hyper-V virtual Ethernet adapters. You just right click on it and select uninstall. Obviously I already uninstalled so I just show you the menu. It looks like this. But you need to uninstall the Hyper-V Ethernet adapter. After that, those V Ethernet adapter will be gone and you are safe to go with VirtualBox. Next, I will do some explanation. So in normal situation, we have a computer looks like this. On the lower level, we have hardware level, which we have a CPU and a CPU have something called VTX, which is required for virtualization software. So on top of the hardware, we have the OS level which is normally Windows and on top of Windows we have hypervisor level in this example we use VirtualBox not Hyper-V and on top of VirtualBox you have maybe Linux 1 or Linux 2 virtual machine and you see the error there so VirtualBox or VMware or other virtualization software need to talk to this VTX it's like a plug you plug onto the VTX then your virtual machine can run properly but nowadays it looks like newly installed Windows 10 is Hyper-V enabled by default so if Hyper-V is enabled the structure looks like this on the bottom level we have CPU VTX is the hardware level, but the, the OS level changed. Your OS is no longer Windows 10. Your OS is Hyper-V. And the Windows 10 you are using actually is a virtual machine on top of the Hyper-V. So that's why removing the Hyper-V is quite difficult. Also, you can have another feature or another VM of Windows 10 or something called Sandbox. Okay, this is one of the features I tell you to disable. And another feature is the Windows Subsystem for Linux. And version 2, I mean WSL version 2 is a virtual machine. So I also want you to disable and change to version 1 because version 1 is not a virtual machine. And you pay attention to the arrow. So Hyper-V is plug into the CPU's VTX socket. Now you install VirtualBox which is another hypervisor on top of the virtual machine Windows 10. So it's a virtual machine inside a virtual machine. So that's why it's causing conflict and the hypervisor of VirtualBox cannot plug into the CPU's VTX because it's already being plugged by uh, Hyper-V and Hyper-V will never release because Hyper-V is a infrastructure for our uh, virtualized Windows 10 so that's the root cause okay that's the end of this tutorial if this helped you please like this video